Hey everyone, Jeff Roberts here at the Salado Wildlife Education Center. As you can see, we are in the center's raptor aviary, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at one of my favorite bird species and one of my favorite raptors that you can see right here. Now, if you'll recall from a Facebook Live we did not long ago, the word raptor means to seize and carry away. Raptor or bird of prey describes a group of birds like this guy right here that are designed to capture and eat other animals. And what you're looking at here, uh, if you're wondering what he is, your hint would be to look at his tail that he's actually fanning out perfectly for you right now. And as, as the sun hits that tail, you'll probably see what a beautiful reddish brown color that is. And this is indeed a red-tailed hawk. Red tails are one of the most common species of hawk in all of North America. Uh, they can be found all throughout. They're very adaptable. That means they can be found in a lot of different types of habitats. They can be found near large bodies of water. They can be found on the edges of wooded areas. Uh, but perhaps one of their favorite or the most ideal habitats for red-tailed hawks is going to be open grasslands that have wood edges and wood pockets nearby. We have to understand what red tails mostly eat. By the way, a chicken hawk is actually a correct nickname for the red-tailed hawk, but I believe is a very unfair nickname because they've actually done research into what red-tailed hawks eat and found that chickens only account for about 10% of their diet. Mostly what red-tailed hawks are catching and eating are small mammals and a whole lot of rodents. Things like mice, rats, chipmunks, squirrels, maybe a rabbit here and there, sometimes reptiles like snakes, uh, a little bit of everything, but mostly on the menu for red-tailed hawks is going to be a lot of small mammals, which is a really good thing. It's very important that we have our raptors in place like the red-tailed hawk because they help to keep populations of rodents in check. Now this guy, I wanna tell you a little bit about this specific red-tailed hawk. If you're getting a good look at him, especially with his head turned like it is now, look at his eyes. I want you to try to focus on his eyes. And you'll see that one looks different than the other. One is really big and pretty and full and the other almost looks like it's not even there. So he is actually completely blind in his right eye. And you have to understand that if you're a red-tailed hawk and you're catching and eating a lot of small mammals, I want you to imagine this. You are a red-tailed hawk. You're 100 feet up in the air and you have to swoop down and catch a mouse that's only this big you would need to be able to see out of both eyes in order to do that because if you can't see out of both eyes like this guy can't, then you don't have good depth perception. Depth perception is your ability to judge distance. And if you're gonna swoop 100 feet out of the air and swoop down to the ground and catch something that's probably scurrying around, you have to be able to judge distance. You have to have depth perception in order to do that. This guy is no longer able to do that, so he's no longer good at hunting. We know that he almost starved to death. People found this hawk lying on the ground on a golf course down in Alabama. He was so weak from not being able to catch food and eat, he was just lying on the ground without gloves or anything, they just picked him right up. That's how weak and in and, uh, and poor condition that he was. Luckily for him, they took him to Auburn University where he was uh, rehabilitated. They couldn't do anything to fix his eye, but they at least got him fattened back up and healthy again. And so because of this injury, he will actually live here at the Salado Center with us for the rest of his life. But he lives a good life. He gets fed every day, no matter what. He doesn't have anything to really worry about. And when we're open like normal, it gives our visitors a great chance to see a red-tailed hawk up close. We're gonna see if he might want to do a little bit of exercising. We're gonna see if he might want to hop around for you all. What I'm gonna do is come down here and put a little piece of food. We talked about what red-tailed hawks eat. Well, the basis of his training, you probably can't see from there, but the basis of his training, it's all about food reward. Every time he's, he does what he's asked to do, he's rewarded with a little piece of food. In this case, we need to feed him the same exact things that he would be eating out in the wild, and uh, that's exactly what we feed him here. So we'll see if he wants to fly toward you all. Put a little piece of mouse right there. Here we go. Come down here and see if you might want to fly toward, toward me. Here we go. <laughs> now you see this glove that I'm wearing and you see his big talons, those, those claws there with those sharp claws, those are very strong. The reason I have to wear this glove is because these are so strong. Uh, these are used 
for him in order to kill his prey. It, it, you have to be able to kill your prey once you have hold of it, and that's exactly what talons are used for, as he's squawking at me now. Uh, if he were to grab hold of my bare hand or my bare arm and squeeze as hard as he's capable of squeezing, which is about 300 pounds of pressure per square inch, it would probably go right down to my bone. It wouldn't feel very good. So that's why I've got to be very careful uh, when I work with a bird like this. I have to be very careful of where I put my bare hand <laughs> and I have to be, uh, obviously, have to wear a glove while he's, uh, while he's gonna be on my body. All right, let's see. A couple more little pieces for him here. We'll let him hang out there for a minute. Oh, he dropped his piece. Ah, he's good. So most of the times that I see a red-tailed hawk in the wild is when I'm driving and I happen to look over and on a tree like you see right here, or perhaps this tree over here that he was on a moment ago, or a utility pole or a fence post, you'll see a bird colored like this, this size. If you see that, I want you to pay attention. If you see that, then there's a great chance that what you're seeing is a red-tailed hawk. Now we do have other species of hawk that are common here in Kentucky, but the red tail is probably the most common species of hawk that we have right here in Kentucky. So next time that you're driving, pay attention. If you look over and you see a bird like this perched on that, the, the snag of the tree or the fence post or the utility pole, especially if it looks like what you're looking at here, especially if you get a look at that really pretty reddish brown tail, then that's your indicator that it is a red-tailed hawk. Next time that you come to the Salado Center, uh, be on the lookout in the Raptor Aviary where we are this morning. Be on the lookout for this guy. And if you have any questions about red-tailed hawks, drop them in the comments below and we'll get to those. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Creature Feature.